Hi, sauerkraut's ready. So if you watched part one, you saw us chop the cabbage up fine and pack it into this jar, weight it down with a jar. I put it inside a bowl because after a few days the liquid comes out and it's been sitting on the kitchen bench out of direct sunlight. So since I saw you from on day two, a few things have happened. About day six, um, it does, it, the liquid dropped a little bit. For some reason that reminds me of breathing in. I feel like the sauerkraut's going <gasps> And so I noticed that and just pushed it down a bit further. Um, again, the next morning, it looked like the liquid had dropped a little bit. So I just push it down further each day for about four days in a row. So now it's actually day 10. Got a bit busy. I normally do this about day five or six, but it really doesn't matter. You could ferment your sauerkraut for three days and if you like the taste, great. Bottle it and eat it like that. I normally ferment it about a week. If the weather's very warm, maybe quicker. But you could leave this for weeks or months if you like. You just keep tasting it and you decide when you like it, when you like the taste and it's ready. So that's where we're at. So what I do from now is we'll take out the weight jar. Let's put that aside for the smell. It smells great. My husband used to say that when the house smells like smelly socks, that's when you know the sauerkraut is ready. Have a look and see if there's any discoloration there because if your, your top cabbage has been exposed to air for a long time, it might go a bit yuck. So you can always just scrape off the top part and compost that. Um, but I'm going to taste what's on the inside. Mm. And it's yum. Yum. So I'm just going to get an empty, excuse me, just going to get an empty jar. And I'm going to take that out of there and pop it into here. Have a system where you could just put a tight lid on this, then that might, and pop it in the fridge. That might work very well for you, because um, this is a fowler's jar. If I'm putting the metal lids on without any rings or any way to seal it to air, then it won't be, it won't stay airtight, and the moisture will come out and it'll end up going mouldy. Happened to me once before. So I'm just packing it down in here again because we want to exclude the air as well. This is a salt-free sauerkraut, so you do need to keep it in the fridge. If you had a, a highly salted sauerkraut, you probably could just keep it in a cool place, but I'll leave people who put salt in the sauerkraut to tell you about that. Perhaps I'll just keep going and I'll fill this jar. Okay, so there we are done. I've just packed that in there and squashed it down. I'll show you with a spoon, you should see how juicy it is. So lots of liquid there on top. So again, that's all packed in and that will be great. We'll put the lid on and pop it in the fridge, put a label on so I know where it's from. And that can sit in the fridge for a couple of months until I'm ready to eat it. You can see all the black spots, which is the seaweed that I put in there with that cabbage. So that's great. If you have downloaded the recipe from the Reseed Centre website, um, you will find a couple of books down the bottom of that one, and I want to share those with you. So, Wild Fermentation is by Sandor Katz, he's the fermentation guy. He gets, he likes doing it with his hands, there you go. And he's got a very handy tip on the sauerkraut page, and that is that you might need to be careful about flies. If there's flies in your area, uh, it's a bit cold here for flies at the moment, but if you might have flies in your kitchen, then you might just want to cover that whole thing with a bit of material, perhaps another band at the bottom. And you'd have to pick to see how the liquid's going. Um, because apparently if flies land on your ageing kraut, then maggots can develop. And apparently it doesn't taste very nice when you've got maggots in your sauerkraut. I'll leave that up to him. If you wanted to watch a video about making salted sauerkraut, I saw a four minute one on YouTube, which is called The Art of Fermentation with Sandor Katz, and he has a book by that name as well. And lastly, uh, so this is where the actual recipe for the salt-free sauerkraut came from, Healing with Whole Foods by Paul Pitchford. It's a chunky one, but lots of goodness in there. Well, the only other things that I just wanted to talk to you about was I know when I've run this as a workshop before, some people are a bit hesitant about pushing down on the glass jar, just a bit worried about it breaking. I've never personally worried. This is nice and thick. 
and um, pushing them directly down on the glass jar feels okay to me. But if you're at all worried about that, then do use the MW rolling pin um, or something else to really pack it down nicely without being fearful of that. So good luck making sauerkraut. Let me know how you go. I hope you can supplement your family's diet with this fantastic food. Bye for now.